Am I the asshole for telling my friend that I think his girlfriend is about to leave him? <laughs> Not 16 years old, by the way. I, 30F, am friends with Ruby, F30. I'm just, is it so much to ask for? To get some consistency? 30F, F30, M31. Can you do, at least put the age and the, and the sex in the same order every time? Sorry, I gotta hide. I'm, I'm, I'm stunlocked too early. And my truck, F-150. I'm going to plus two that one, Chad. That was a good one. Plus two to you. We met at uni and we're part of the same group of friends. They got together in our final year. After uni, Tom and I started work. Ru Ruby did masters while working. Jason OD'd and died. What the hell is going on? The coolest dream. <laughs> After masters, Ruby landed a very good job and Tom decided to quit his. Apparently, she wasn't happy but let it go. Ruby and I were very best friends, but after graduation, she became boring. While me and Tom would have a drink or two in their garden, she would study or work and drifted apart. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Recently, Ruby has become more distanced. When I come over and Tom and I sit in the garden, she doesn't even join us. She does her own stuff. She barely acknowledges us. Well, Tom doesn't see an issue. I tried to tell him, but he said it's fine. At least she doesn't bother him while gaming anymore. She's lost a lot of weight lately. She's gained it because of her thyroid and has just been focusing on herself. I tried inviting her to have a drink with us, but she always refuses. Frankly, I think she's taking adulting way too seriously. Psychic damage. Psychic damage. Last Saturday, I was out with some friends and we were doing a pub crawl. At one, I noticed Ruby having a drink with her friends. I didn't know she had any. And she was her old self, laughing, having fun, cracking jokes. She was the life of the party. I didn't know any of those people, and I suspected Tom didn't either. I texted Tom, and he said he's busy with a game, and we'll talk later. I couldn't let it go. She went outside with her friend, and I followed them. It was crowded, so she didn't notice me, and I kind of eavesdropped on them. I was lucky because, of their, because they're talking about her plans, and it seems she's planning on leaving Tom. She's sick of him not working and ignoring her, but been stuck because he doesn't work. She saved money for herself and saved a few months' money for him, so when she leaves, he can have money to live off. I couldn't believe my ears. What a B T C H. Let me scroll down just a little bit here. She said... She's got her ticket and house sorted, but she saw me before saying more. She looked at me with disgust, didn't even acknowledge me, and she switched to another language with her friend. Oh, man. I'm, let's read the whole post. Let's not get stunlocked immediately. I got a taxi and went straight to Tom's, telling him what I hear. He told me to stop being silly. Plus, I'm playing a game. We'll talk later. I told him he should consider what to do so she stays, and he said she has no reason to leave. We played some games and got a bit more drunk. I stayed on their sofa and didn't know when Ruby came home. I was woken up by Ruby at 2 p.m., and she called me an asshole amongst other names, kicked me out of the house, telling me to never come again. She was pissed because Tom confronted her about leaving. She told me not to meddle, and I told her he has a right to know if she's going to leave and has a chance to make things right. Was I really in the wrong for telling him? I mean, we used to be friends, but I don't think I have any publication to her, but I am not sure. Am I really the asshole for warning him? I thought he deserved that. Update. Shit has hit the fun. Last night, Tom knocked on my door crying. She kicked him out. They were talking, and he was beginning... He was be begging for her to stay. He offered to find a part-time job and do more around the house, but she wouldn't listen to him and didn't care that he wanted to try. Okay. I know I said I wasn't going to get stunlocked. Your girlfriend works, provides all the finances for the home. And there's, it's not going to be a popular statement, okay? But there's more for you to do around the house. You got 40 hours a week chilling. And then also the evenings. And there's still stuff you're not doing like everything around the house or like 85%. You don't, I, I say it, you don't know how lucky you got it. During eight hours of work, if you did like two hours of chores daily, that place would be fucking sparkling. 
It can, unless you live in a palatial manner or something like that. But like, you know, look, you do the dishes. Maybe you vacuum once every two days, clean the bathrooms like once a week, do some laundry. What else you fucking got to do? He's on Rumble versus 100%. There's no doubt. He's, he's probably the guy that, that, javelin tackling me in the final circle. Vacuum every two days? Oh, I'm just saying you got to justify your role. Like you don't, you don't have to vacuum every two days, but if your partner's out there grinding, you should at least, you know, I mean, keep up appearances, right? Like here's what I would do. If I was in this situation, first off, there's no doubt the house would be clean as hell every day. But 100% of the time, whenever, it would, like if she comes home at like 5.30, 5.25, I'm plugging in the vacuum cleaner so that when I open the door, she always sees me do, doing something. So she gets the subconscious impression that like, oh, he's been working all day. He, he couldn't even finish the housework by the time I got home. Or I'd be like, I would just open the door wearing like rubber gloves and be like, oh, sorry, I just finished cleaning the bathroom or something like that. Meanwhile, I would, you know, have a leisurely breakfast. I'd probably go for a nice walk, play some Pokemon Go, come back, eat a leisurely lunch. And then I would do some chores and then I would probably like watch a movie or something like that. And then I would plug in the vacuum at 525 and be like, Zzzz. anyway. <clears throat> and then if she, people are like, well, what if she came home early one day? Well, I would just, as if she came home before 5.30 and I was looking like I was just gaming, I would be like, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel well. You can only pull that card like once every few years though. So you gotta, most of the time you gotta be on the, on the ball. But you can't, if, the, if your girlfriend's making all the money for the house, you can't let the home be in disarray. Because then your girlfriend is just your mom. Like you're supposed to be equals in the relationship. You're in, in theory, you're supposed to be making an effort to put in, you know, equal effort. If she's doing all the breadwinning and 50% of the housework, you gotta, you're, you're like, stop being such a loser. I'm sorry, I didn't know how else to phrase it. You should do 100, but you should at least do like 85 or something like that. Like, what are you doing? Sorry, sorry. Now, if the roles were reversed, I would say she's girl bossing. Leave her alone. But I, I can put myself in his shoes more easily, okay? She said she's leaving in two weeks. There's, she's... She's so serious about adulting, she gave two weeks' notice to her boyfriend. He asked where, if they could meet and work on things while living separately, but she's moving abroad. She asked him to go and stay someplace else while she's packing. He, she's packing? Everybody get down, she's got a gun! And he can move back in once she leaves. She told him she had money saved up for him. So he'll have time to find job. He asked her if he could get them now since he has to go someplace else to stay and she said absolutely not. Them is the money in this case. She asked her, he asked her if she could get them, if he could get them. Have you ever had a dream that she also said that because of that, him asking her, she wasn't going to give him money for six months as she originally planned, but only for three months because he only cares about money. So he is not staying at mine because he doesn't have money. So he is not staying at mine because he doesn't have money to stay elsewhere for two weeks. And she wouldn't even give him a penny. She has his debit card. They had a joined account and she had a separate one. But she's transferred all but 100 pounds. That's all he has for two weeks. As you can see, she's not the saint you guys make her out to be. Tom is heartbroken and all she cares is money and her move. She doesn't care how he feels or if he has a place to stay for the two weeks. The last, the edit, I don't understand at all. She doesn't have any, he doesn't have any money, so she, he can't stay with her because she doesn't have any money, but he's staying with me. I, I don't fully get what's happening here. Um, but I feel like, both OP and the guy are, are bozos. 
I'm giving a verdict of bozo here. You're entitled, for the record, you know, within reasonability to live your life however you want. You want to be a, a 31 year old guy who just plays video games all day? Well, you can become a streamer. <laughs> but also, um, you're entitled to do that, but that doesn't mean that, you know, your girlfriend who is crushing it in all aspects and doesn't want to get drunk on the weekends with her university friends and sleep until 2 p.m., um, that doesn't mean that she has to stay with you. It actually seems like, I, I mean, I don't know if the last paragraph is implying that she stole some money, but like she, he doesn't make any money. So how could he, how could she steal her own money? It actually sounds like she gave him a hundred pounds by leaving a hundred pounds in the checking account that she filled up. I mean, it's not a lot of money for an adult to survive, but it is her money. <laughs> So, like, I don't see that being... I mean, like, they're supposed to be equals, right? Oh, my girlfriend broke up with me, but she didn't even give me any money? It's just, like, a weird statement. I don't know. I mean, I, again, I'm not getting into the, the legalities of, like, is this a common law situation? I don't know. British, you know, domestic law. But that's not what we're here for. It's not like give me a, 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 you know, a legally binding verdict. It's like, who's a bozo? Well, like, I don't know. I feel like it honestly sounds like Tom and the poster should be in a relationship together. They both don't take adult life seriously, which again is completely fine as long as they're not trying to fit a round peg into a square hole and be like, uh, married to a, a, a career woman like it's that those are incompatible lifestyles so if you want to have a couple of ciders and and play fifa all day then then sure you guys you, you would get along great what's the problem also i don't understand why he feels like he should get more money it doesn't make any sense to me my girlfriend broke up with me she only left me a hundred pounds of her money she, you, you realize how bad of a boyfriend you have to be for your girlfriend to pay you severance? She actually paid you like a fuck-off fee. It's Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. She did say, I'll pay you 100 pounds to fuck off. That's an indictment of your character. And two weeks notice! That's crazy. She reduced the severance twice? Yeah, because you kept asking for more. I would be annoyed too. She told him she had some money saved up so he'll have time to find a job. He asked her if he could get the money now since he has to go someplace else and find someplace else to stay. It's crazy. Anyway. I'm still flabbergasted that he said he would put in an effort to do more around the house. Doesn't make any damn sense to me. Hold on, I gotta read some comments here. They're gonna dunk on this guy. Hold on. <laughs> hey, everybody's dunking on the OP, but I want them to dunk on Tom more because I'm just, I, what is he doing, man? Hold on, I'm scrolling. You're the asshole. She's too adult. She's a bitch for giving him money. He plays video games and gets drunk while she works. I hope she leave, leaves quickly to go live her adult life. Okay almost insulted Tom. I don't believe a 30-year-old wrote this, okay? That's pretty fair. Everybody sucks here except Ruby, okay? That's true, but go off on Tom, please. You're the asshole, okay? That's true. Anyway, hold on. You're Oh, this one's got bullet points, okay? I'm leaving that one behind. Oh, grow up. Stay out of other people's relationships. And guess what? Of course your friend was super happy. I'd be happy too if someone paid all my bills and did everything while I sat on my ass and wasted my own college degree doing nothing. And he said the only problem they had was her nagging him. Translation, she was telling him point blank the things that made her unhappy and the change she wanted to see and he made zero effort to accommodate her. Ruby deserves her freedom. Her life will be much better with both of you gone. And in 10 years... You'll have no one to blame but yourselves. You aren't in your 20s anymore. Now is the time to build the life you want, which is what smart little Ruby is doing. I don't know why she phrased it like that, but she went off. 
Smart little Ruby. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I, I'm scrolling until I see more asshole posts. Smart little Ruby, whether she's working her job that pays her too much money, doing all of the financial responsibilities of the household, or <laughs> building equity that skyrockets their net worth. If Tom came to me and begged for greater severance, I would have said no. Top posts this week. That was only top posts of today. Holy cow. That's, a one, that's 24 hours of Am I the Asshole Asshole posts. Am I the asshole for telling my sister that she overreacted when she screamed at me for entering her and her husband's room? What? Oh, it's fake. <laughs> Just looked at it. I had no idea they were doing it, especially since Claire told me Thomas has been feeling sick for the past two days. Okay, I, we leave that one. Scrolling. Am I the asshole for missing my daughter's birth? <laughs> oh, man. Always, I think about it like once a week, that episode of Unexpected on, uh, on TLC, which is all, it's exploitative, don't get me wrong. It's all about teenage pregnancies. This like 17-year-old girl and the 17-year-old father are having their second kid. And they're packing the baby bag for the hospital. And the dude packs his PS4. And then she's like, why are you packing that? And he's like, there's a lot of downtime at the hospital. Uh, <laughs> not, for her. not for her. Anyway. Oh, man. It's so good. Just sneak in like a quick game of 2K while the doctors are <laughs> testing my baby's hearing. Yeah, you're right. That's why you need a switch. Just play it in handheld mode. Okay, React Core Real. Here we go. For a little background information, I, 28 male, have a beautiful wife. We've been trying for a baby for about three years and have known each other since we were in high school. When my wife found out we were pregnant, she was thrilled that we've been getting prepared for months now. She's nine months pregnant. My dad is a real asshole, but he keeps me employed. He owns a pretty nice Italian restaurant that's been run by my family for decades. I've worked there since I was 15, and I am now the head chef. The problem is he treats his employees pretty bad, including me. And if you miss even one shift, you get demoted or even worse, fired. I was in the middle of a very hectic shift on the busiest day of the week when my mother-in-law called, saying my wife went into labor and I needed to get to the hospital right away. When I asked my dad if I could go, he said, you can go if you're okay with being unemployed which I couldn't risk because after the baby was born, my wife would be off work for quite a while to be a stay-at-home mom. The reason my dad was so mad was because he was understaffed and really needed my help. Fake, fake, fake. <laughs> you think this is, you really think a, that a dad wouldn't say on the birth of his first grandchild, he wouldn't say, you can go if you're okay with being unemployed? Fake, fake. When I tried calling my mother-in-law, she wouldn't pick up, so I just kept working, and I thought that I could explain myself later. Later, when it was time to go home, I drove to the hospital. My, mo my mother-in-law and her sisters refused to let me in the room and called me names like bad husband, bad father. When it was finally time to leave the hospital, my wife and newborn baby went home with my mother-in-law. They haven't spoken to me in days, even when I try to apologize and explain myself. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I need to know if I the asshole. <laughs> I thought I was doing the right thing. I don't think this... I'm with you. I don't think this is real. But... Oh, man. That's bad. You need to... You need to get a new job. Too sweet. If this is real, you need a new job. You never know where Grand Cherokee's 4x4 capability will take you. Thankfully, its 360-degree camera will help keep an eye on things. <clears throat> You never know where Grand Cherokee's 4x4 capability will take you. Thankfully, its 360-degree camera will keep an eye on things. Are they the asshole for injecting an in-stream ad to my own content? No. 
they're the asshole because they're driving a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Owned. Am I the asshole for... As, sorry. Am I the asshole for asking my wife rhetorically if she wants our son to get hurt? I'm going to need more information on this one, please. I, male 28, live with my wife, Macy. F28. <laughs> There's a rule that I have. You can't share other people's names if you don't share your own name. So you got your son's name, an infant son named Leo. You got a wife, Macy. What's the husband's name? Quirky Addendum 2779. Leo is our first and only child and is five months old. Macy works part-time and I work full-time. Macy works on Tuesdays, but I don't. If Macy gets a call to work on the day that's three days after Tuesday and I get a call to work on the day that's four days before Wednesday, who's looking after the baby? Macy works on Tuesdays, but I don't. Macy normally leaves the house at around 8 a.m. to get to work on time, but I like to take the opportunity to sleep in where I can get it. You are the asshole already. <laughs> you should have thought of that before you conceived, dickhead. What are you thinking? Are you dumb? You had, you had 28 years to take the opportunity to sleep in, and then you made a decision that gave up that right, okay? Whenever Macy gets ready for work, Leo will usually start crying in his crib even after he's had his first feed of the day. This doesn't wake me up unless he's been crying for a little while because I'm a heavy sleeper. It's my, my child cries a little bit, but it's usually easy to ignore. For the past two Tuesdays, Macy has decided to take Leo out of his crib and put him in our bed with me right before she leaves for work, even though I'm sound asleep. She doesn't do anything to wake me up because she's leaving for work and Leo stops crying when she puts him in our bed. Okay, that's also really bad. I'm not trying to judge anybody, but if you don't have a kid, you, you might not know there's best practices for a newborn's sleep and... Putting a child in your bed as an adult is already bad, but then putting it in the bed with someone who may not even know it's there is way worse. Like, that's very dangerous. When I say I'm not trying to judge, what I mean, you know, because there's people out there that they, they co-sleep with their children and everything turns out fine. But whenever they say that, I'm like, that's like saying, you know, you rolled the dice and like snake eyes didn't come up. Like, that doesn't mean that the dice doesn't have a one on it. You know what I mean? So I'm look, if, you, if you've made it through that period of your life and everything's fine, then that's great. I, I, for the, it, I'm less paranoid about it now, but especially for like the first year of our daughter's life, I was like, I would like put her in the crib, I would leave the room, and then I'd be like, oh shit, what if um, there's a mild earthquake and a book falls off the bookshelf and lands on a stuffed animal and pushes the stuffed animal onto her face and she suffocates, right? Like, that that's where my head was at. Now that she's basically two, I've relaxed a little bit, but, like, <laughs> this... There are a lot of days where I, I woke up and I was like, oh, she should be crying by now. I guess she died. I guess she died in the night. And then you just sort of like sit there for a bit and be like, well, I'm just going to enjoy this little period before I have to face that. And then you wait, like you maybe like brush your teeth and then you go into the room and she's just chilling and you're like, oh, never mind. Good morning. <laughs> it messes up your, your amygdala, man. Having a kid, like your, your amygdala permanently expands to like five times its normal size. It's not rational. The human brain is, is, not, is not okay. Yeah, people are saying my brain works the same way. I'm telling you. Yes, Kate has a, there's a baby cam video of me waking her up one day. And I like went in and was like, hi. And she didn't react at all. And I was like, that's fairly normal. So I like put my hand like on her chest and started to do like a circular rub. And she didn't react. And you can see on the baby cam, it was like a, I got hit by a lightning bolt. I was like, 
And then I just kept, I did it for like another five seconds and she was like, <laughs> Good morning. Anyway, she was just chilling, honestly. Anyway, um, nothing bad has happened yet, but I know the risks of putting a baby in a normal bed with an adult sleeping in it. Leo crawls and I'm worried he could fall out of the bed and hurt himself. Okay, I didn't even know that he could crawl. It's already bad enough that he could just be hurt or worse. But the fact that he can crawl means that, yes, he cannot be in the... As it, assuming that you're responsible enough to have a box spring because you have a child... You, please tell me you don't just have the, the mattress on the ground like you're living in a college flop house or something. So you gotta, that's dangerous. The baby could w w crawl off the bed and like hit their head on the floor. I told her, I talked to Macy and told her to leave Leo in his crib when she's getting ready for work. Macy got annoyed and said she can't just leave him to cry and said I'm a bad father for not noticing and waking up when Leo's in the bed saying that if it was her she'd notice and wake up. I got angry and told Macy that she's being unreasonable and asked her what she thought would happen if Leo fell out of the bed. I asked her if she wanted Leo to get injured. Macy got really mad and has gone to stay with her sister for a couple of days and took Leo with her. Well now you can sleep in. Be careful what you wish for. Hasn't been answering my calls or texts and still hasn't come home. I've never seen Macy this angry with me before. So I'm wondering if I was the asshole for now. ETA. I don't know what ETA means, but... I get off work 4 to 5 a.m. on weekdays, so I'm getting around 3 hours of sleep when Macy goes to work. Macy only works one day a week. We don't need her income, and I make more money, but she likes her job, and I respect her choice to work. I work 70 hours a week and do my fair share of housework and cooking when I'm home, so I sleep like the deceased when I'm in bed. Okay. ETA means edited the ad. Thank you. Okay, honestly... It's a self-serving edit, but at the same point, I am like, I mean, it does provide some context. I was going to say, we'll just wake up, but waking up after three hours of sleep, I mean, that's like a forehead moment. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's, it's like setting yourself up for failure. It's like when people say, I'm just, my, oh, my weight loss plan, I'm never going to eat another carbohydrate. I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you in two weeks. We'll see how this plan's holding up. Regardless, I mean, this is, the situation is really bad, but the resolution is not that bad. You just need to figure out what the hell you're going to do on Tuesdays, man. Sounds like six days a week, everything's going okay. Just Tuesdays, you just got to gotta figure it out. I, I mean, I have more sympathy for this guy. If he's working 70 hours a week and the time that he's not working, he's also helping... To take care of a five-month-old infant. Again, you do it to yourself. Don't get me wrong. But like... <laughs> you, you, I'm, I'm sympathetic, at least, to this. I have a much easier job. I work less hours. And my child is older. And at the same time, at the end of the day, at the end of the week especially, I'm a little beat. So I, I do get it. But your, your wife cannot put the baby in the bed with you when you don't know that the baby's, especially if the baby can crawl. Like, that's just something you, you just can't do it. Why, it's like, why don't you just leave them like on a swimming pool or something like that? It's, it's a recipe for disaster. So I don't know what you're gonna do. Honestly, I, it's, I do think it's kind of like an everybody sucks here. That's about it. Including the child? Come on. <laughs> Why are you crying so damn much? Get a nanny on Tuesdays? I, I'll be honest with you. King George uh, the third voice. I wasn't aware that's a thing you can do. I think because my only knowledge of nannies comes from the show The Nanny and the trailer for Nanny McPhee. I thought nannies were kind of like an all or nothing sort of thing. I thought like if you get a nanny, they like live in your house or at least they're there like five days a week, like nine to five or something like that. You can just get in, you can get a nanny for one day. It's a thing you can do.
There's nannies out there that are like, I'm looking to add another like three hours a week onto my schedule. Yeah, Tuesday morning is seven. That's great. <laughs> so that's that's really that works perfectly for my schedule. I'll be there at six forty-five. Yeah, I don't really understand. I don't understand the whole nanny system. I I can understand the temptation. Don't get me wrong. I just don't understand the. I didn't know there was a way you could just like book a nanny for a little bit. Like Uber a nanny. It's called a babysitter? No. If a babysitter is under the age of... If a baby is... If a babysitter is over the age of 20, they become a nanny, right? Isn't it like a... It's a life cycle thing? Like a tadpole becomes a frog, becomes a crocodile? It's like... Or when Pikachu evolves into Raichu, like... <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Um... You're right. I know. Everything I said is all true. Anyway, I mean, I can I be honest with you? I think she's overreacting a little bit. Like, there's probably never a situation where you should say, do you want your daughter to, or do you want your son to get hurt? That's like not a fair argument tactic. But she did also call him a bad father. You shouldn't be saying that either. It's like if you ever go to reddit.com slash r slash dadit, which is like the, the, the dad group on Reddit instead of the mom group. The mom group is basically like 90% posts that are like, how can my husband do so little and expect so much? And then r slash dadit is all posts that are like, everybody only asks me what am I doing? Nobody ever asks me how am I doing? It's a, it's a glimpse into this, the soul. <laughs> it's so true. But like, you shouldn't call him a bad father. He's working 70 hours a week. He's, he's, he's working his tail off, you know? Anyway, take me, take me back. I love it. Am I, am I the asshole for asking my wife rhetorically? rhetorically, if she would like our child to be hurt. I wouldn't ask her literally, because I think I know the answer. I was simply asking rhetorically if she would be okay with our daughter being hurt. Hey, why, can somebody tell me why my Reddit uh, endless scroll does not work? Why, why is my endless scroll not working on Reddit? I get down to a post, I can't go any further down, but there's no like page numbers or anything. Because Reddit is ass. It is like the worst website on the planet. No, it, like it's got to be one of the top 20 websites on the internet by traffic. And it's like the only one of them that goes down. Is there like a, a, a tag I can add to the end of the URL? Right now, the, the tag is question mark T equals week. Okay, so we've indicated that there is a tag. And the tag is, or the timeline is weekly. And don't crash equals true. <laughs> can, I, can I put like another parameter on this and, and put like ampersand uh, scroll equals infinite or something like that? Yes, ampersand inf scroll. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hold on, I'm scrolling. It fucking worked! <laughs> you genius! You princes of Maine, you kings of New England. Bro, that's all they had to do? I thought you had to get Reddit Premium to get the Doom Scroll. That's amazing. 
It's probably because you reloaded. Ah, uh, yeah. Even a blind nut gets a squirrel every now and then. Am I the asshole for blatantly pretending my roommate doesn't exist because of her quote-unquote robbing prank? I live in a very safe city, one of the safest cities in the nation. Due to this and lack of parental regulation as a kid, I've never locked my doors. I hate this shit. Hold on one second. First off, I gotta go full screen. Secondly, I hate that shit. Because that was what we as Canadians have, have had to deal with forever. Is that because of the damn, in Bowling for Columbine, Michael Moore interviews like the 20 dumbest Torontonians. And goes, hey, the, the, the people in Canada lock their doors? And they're like, no, nobody in Canada locks their doors. Because crime doesn't exist. Everybody that I know in Canada locks their doors. Because it takes half of a second and at least provides like some barrier to crimes of opportunities. Also, the other reason I lock my door is not just so that like someone doesn't break into my house. It's also so people that are like hammered drunk don't just like come home to the wrong house or something like that and go to sleep on my couch. It's just like just by I do I do that. I save myself a lot of potential headaches. That's the that's the big thing. If someone wants to kill specifically me, I don't think a locked door is going to stop them. But if someone is just going around wiggling doorknobs, then I think that you make yourself less of a target. It's the same reason that in front of our house we have one of those stickers that's like, this is protected by XYZ security company. And then when our neighbor gets one that's like, we're protected by XYZ security company, then we, next to the sticker, we put a little sign in the lawn that says, we're really protected by XYZ security company. So that if, if somebody's going to rob a place, they look at the, they're like, which of these two houses am I going to go to? Of course, you're going to go to the one that has less stickers and signs. Don't beware of guard dog. Trespassers will be shot on sight. Uh, my other house is a gun. You know, you get the idea. It's, it's an arms race. Anyway, this, well, I just don't understand. Like, you, what do people think they're gaining by not locking their doors? Because you're saving no time at all. Like literally a, a, an amount of time that is impossible to harvest on a daily basis. It's not like, you, well, if you add up the second that you're saving every day for your whole life, you get 10 minutes. No, you don't because you can't. You can't add that shit up. This shit is gone. It's ether. It's like trying to hold sand in your hand. Like it's slipping between your fingers. Regardless, I just don't understand, understand why they wouldn't like lock their door. It just, it's, it seems like, you know what, it becomes like a, uh, it, it's like a flex for them. It's like, look at how awesome my neighborhood is. I don't have to lock my door. Well, yeah, they still smash your car window or something like that. Regardless, I drive a Wrangler and take the top and doors off and I've never had a problem with stealing. Okay, so this person is just, they're in love with the fact that they feel like crime can't happen to them. I've never locked the doors to my houses or apartments. This has never been an issue with my old roommates or family. It's just the way I've developed. My roommate, since moving in, has become increasingly more paranoid and anxious. I've known her for years and have never seen her like this. She thinks there are cameras in her sink. If she gets a bug bite, she assumes she has bugs living in her bed. When she sleeps, she has paralysis where someone comes in to kill her. She locks her bedroom door and front door for safety. Okay, she has a genuine mental illness and, like, needs some help. <laughs> And locking her, her room door and her front door has nothing to do with that. Room door is maybe further than I would go, but at the same time is completely reasonable behavior within the normal spectrum. The camera's in the sink and the bugs under her skin, not so much. Knowing this, I've tried to lock the door. However, I don't sometimes. It's a habit I'm trying to break. Fair enough. I came home a week ago. There was shit everywhere. It looked like a mini tornado whirled through my apartment. I went in my room and my TV was gone. My mini boba fridge was gone. All my vintage Playboys were gone. This is fake. This is fake. All my apes, all my apes are gone. Nobody, my vintage Playboys. 
It's not worth anything, probably. Nobody's breaking into your house and stealing your vintage magazines. They're like using that shit to like line their birdcage. Quick, steal the... <laughs> Bro... I'll take it a step further. I don't think in the in the year 2022 anyone's stealing your damn TV either. That's an antiquated meme. Nobody's gonna take your damn TV. They're, they're giving that shit away at Best Buy. They're like 75 bucks for a 40 inch flat screen. That definitely nobody's taking your damn magazine. They just take your wallet and like sell your identity on the dark web or something like that. They're not gonna haul out a a TV and try to fence that shit on the black market for 20 bucks. Okay, let's, let's continue. It was clear through my eyes that I had been robbed. I sat on my bed and just sat there in shock on the verge of tears. How could this happen? I called my father who didn't pick up and I was left defeated practically. I jumped up because I was worried for my roommate's room. She was sitting there waiting for me. She had all my things in there, pranked me to try to teach me a lesson about locking the door. My problem is that she never even talked to me. I had no idea this was an issue with her before. She said I should have assumed that I need to lock the door out of respect for a shared living space. Actually, very true. Like, if you have roommates, your front door is not your front door. That's, that's a shared front door. True, but also psycho. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's just a given. Like, <laughs> on a medical level, I think. After trivial arguing, I went mute, grabbed all my stuff and put it in my room, and I have completely ignored her since. I'm upset and not over it. I find her thought process alarming and delusional. A mutual friend says I'm overreacting. Nope and being rude to her when she's going through a hard time. As much as I understand that she's having problems, I have received zero empathy or question of my feelings. I don't think I'm an asshole. I think everyone's out of their minds and I need some time away from the crazies. Edit, oh boy, look. Oh, jeez. I'm just naive. I honestly didn't know. Thank you to people who understand I wasn't being malicious by forgetting to lock the door. Also, no, my roommate is not insane. She's a close friend of mine. And we get along well in every other situation. We do most things together. She's not insane. We're friends. Doctor. That's my biggest confusion about this. Is she's never had a problem with communication before. So I am not finding another roommate. Lol. The one solution that's obvious to this problem. Sorry. It wouldn't work uniquely in this one. She's going to the doctor for her symptoms. And help is on the way. And yes, my instinct was to sit on my bed. When you enter that level of shock, it's hard to think clearly. My perspective at the moment was that she was not home yet because her car wasn't there. I wasn't, wasn't meaning to be selfish by being sad about my collections or not thinking about my potentially dead roommate. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Um, yeah, your roommate is out of her mind. I don't really, I don't know if you need to say anything else about the subject. OP is also out of her mind. Well, I think that she's a little naive. I think naive was a good way to describe it. I mean, like, <laughs> I just, I, we, we've talked about it once every six months for five years. You get nothing out of not locking your doors and you risk something. You don't risk a lot, but at the same time, like, to, to not lock your doors as a flex, to be like, I'm not afraid. I mean, I think you can draw an obvious comparison that is unfavorable that I'm going to be the bigger man and not even touch upon. You don't have to be afraid. You just have to be sensible. If I can go like this and minimize my odds of being a victim of a crime of opportunity, why wouldn't I? Doesn't mean I'm scared, like, oh no, I locked the door. I, I hope nobody takes an axe to it and, like, takes it down. It's just, uh, you know, you just do it because it's, it's sane and sensible. It's like when I feel a rumbling in my tumbly, I go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet. It's not because I'm scared I'm going to shit my pants. It's just because, you know, if the flow starts, I want to take the appropriate action. I want to I give myself every possible chance for success instead of catastrophic failure. It's literally like it's, it's so little effort to just do this. Do you lock your door when you're at home? Yes, absolutely. I mean, because I, I would rather someone comes to my house and goes and then walks away 
then walks inside of my house and then I go, um, hello? And I'm face to face with like a robber. <laughs> I don't need to stop them. Like that's what the lock is for. Yeah, I would, you're right. I would rather lock it when I'm home than when I'm away. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't really care if you, like, I mean, I care. But I care less if you rob me than if you, like, you know, break and enter my home while I'm asleep or something like that. You can go ahead. I don't know what you're going to steal in here. You're going to steal some assets? Okay. Steal my damn Lululemon ABCs. One of the pairs already has a rip crotch anyway. My, my one million YouTube subscriber plaque, go ahead. You, if you can lift the Peloton, go ahead, honestly. We'll cancel the subscription. My vintage Playboys, those are in the safety deposit box, okay? They're not getting into that. They're in the panic room. If someone breaks into my house and takes my fridge, I'm sorry to tell you that I think they need it more than I do. Normally, you have to call like professionals to come and take that shit. You need like a dolly, like a hand truck, or a really strong guy with one of those like canvas belts wrapped around his midsection. Am I the asshole for thinking it's fair that I get a larger portion of food than my sister? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, it might be fair thermodynamically, but let's just look at this. My sister and I recently had an argument that got very heated about whether or not I deserve a lar larger serving size when we have dinner. We were both having salmon and she put hers in the oven before I did. When I put mine in, I noticed the pieces were quite small. However, she said she was entitled to half of it since it wouldn't be fair that we have different amounts if we're both hungry. For reference, I'm around 6'1 and she's around 5'4. I tried to explain that we have different dietary requirements because I'm bigger and the degree to which I would be hungry would be greater than the degree to which she would be hungry if we had the same portion size. Though she insists it's only fair because she shouldn't have to sacrifice her half for me. Though I think I'm sacrificing by letting her have... I think I'm sacrificing by letting her have half in the first place? She says that I should supplement my food with something else if I need more food, but I don't see why I can't say the same thing to her. We both think each other is being selfish and don't, it doesn't really seem like we can resolve this disagreement. So am I the asshole? Uh, am I the asshole? Okay, I've been convinced that I was wrong. The main thing that convinced me is it isn't her responsibility to make sure I'm full, which is true. It's my responsibility. I think I'll start buying my own groceries. This is the problem with proper nutrition. You get people that are adult height with the child's brain. This, this person is three inches taller than me and at least 2% dumber. <laughs> you shouldn't be this tall if you're still kind of stupid. I'm sorry, okay? I'm... You should have to give up a little height. Like temporarily. Also, I never meant to say she should have no salmon. It seems like some people interpret it that way. I just meant to say I should get a bit more. Just so you guys know, she did get the salmon, not me. So don't worry about that. Here's the thing. If you want to be this hyper literal, well, I'm bigger than you, so I have greater caloric needs, then you got to take it to its logical extreme, young Sheldon. Instead of being like, I get more food in every situation, you have to find your basal metabolic rate plus augmented by a factor based on your activity. Find your sister's basal metabolic rate augmented based on her activity. Then you need to look at the calorie count of the meal. Because if you guys are eating a 2000 calorie dinner, and it's split evenly, you don't need half of her dinner to supplement because you're both eating too fucking much. Similarly speaking, if it's a 200 calorie meal, you should each be getting half of it because you're at like starvation rations, okay? So there's only a very narrow subset of meals where it would actually be relevant that the taller person needs to get more food. Because you're living in a country where you're posted on Reddit and this is what's bothering you in your life instead of like 
I need medicine or food or water or, or like a house or something like that. I'm going to assume that you live in a world of relative abundance where meeting your caloric daily requirements is not an issue. In which case, why are you getting in your own fucking way by starting arguments with family over who gets the bigger piece of salmon? Doesn't make any damn sense. We, how stupid do you have? What is this caveman philosophy? I'm bigger than you, so I get more food at every sitting. Oh, I, I had a light lunch today, and you went to McDonald's. Yeah, but I'm taller. I'm taller than you. So, like, I have greater caloric needs. Yeah, but you've eaten more than me today. But I'm, I'm taller. I'm taller than you. I'm bigger than you. Give me half. Give me 61% of your ice cream bar. just stupid it's like you're 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 not ready for this discussion yet okay i am big this is food robbery i will say it's kind of it's hypocritical of me because my wife always gives me the bigger portion and then i eat it all and then she's like do you want some of mine i'm done and then i go yeah maybe i'll nibble a little bit and then i eat all of hers too so I don't have to worry about this problem in my life because I'm not, I, I'm a stud. I don't have to hide my hunger, unlike you. But it's not because I'm taller. It's just because I love eating. Am I the asshole for telling my niece she had potential and everything could have worked out for her too? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Am I the asshole for telling my son to get over it? Okay. I like that one. Exercise. Wait, sorry. English is not my first language. My wife and I tried for a baby for a long time, but couldn't have one. We finally decided to adopt, and we adopted a 12-year-old boy. Jared, fake name. Of all the fake names you could choose, you've chosen one. It's heavily loaded <laughs> with a lot. Could I just get you to not... Okay, Kevin. Let's call him Kevin S. Okay, my our adopted son, Jeffrey E. My wife and I tried to have a baby, but eventually we decided to adopt. We'll use a fake name to protect the innocent. Let's call him OJ. Let's call him T. Bundy. Um, sorry, we weren't in a good financial situation, but we tried to do our best. Four years after that, we had a daughter, Jada. A few years after that, I got a very good job. We were able to provide a very comfortable life for Jada. Also, I admit that as Jared was our first child, we have no idea how to be parents. We were more strict, like early curfews, being a little overprotective and things like that. Okay, to, like honestly, to go from not having a kid to getting a 12-year-old is like a Nathan Fielder experiment. Like you, you're supposed to ramp up like every day the parenting changes a little bit and you change in response to the growing demands and the changing restrictions, right? To just get a 12-year-old like handed to you, that's, that's tough, man. I don't think any parents out there are like, mm, the ideal age, uh, when, when did I have the best relationship with my child? Uh, probably like mm, right when they started being a teenager, essentially. Right when puberty hit, they really mellowed out. <laughs> and then... <laughs> That's uh, so I have some sympathy for that. I'm not just trying to poke fun at it. I'm just saying so there's a certain amount of sympathy that you got to have for that. With Jada, we had more experience and didn't make those mistakes. Wrong. You had no experience from zero to 12. You don't have to give a the, the parameters you need for a 12 year old is much different than the parameters you need for a newborn. They be, oh, I, oh, Jada, um, d don't swear so much. You know, it doesn't. They, it, I don't think you can just transfer that. I don't have a 12-year-old. I know, but I'm assuming it's different. I mean, if I'm still changing my 12-year-old's diapers, then who am I going to tell them to get over it? <laughs> now, Jared is 30 and Jada is 14. Time skip. Jared keeps complaining about how unfair it is that Jada has a better life. We apologized and told him we wish we could give him a better life, but things were different back then. Today, he was at our home and Jada was telling him about her boyfriend. And he said, you have a boyfriend? I wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend when I was your age. 
16 years ago. Get over it. Yeah, you know why you should say get over it, honestly. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, we'll just wait for it. Then she told him about our trip and he told me, you take her to trips, you never treated me like this. Guess we know who your favorite is. I just got mad and told him, can't you just be happy for your sister? Stop acting like a kid, you're 30. Yes, I couldn't afford to go to trips back then, just get over it. He called me an asshole and left. Jada's on my side and thinks, we are being, thinks he was being childish, but my wife said I'm the asshole and should apologize. Edit, I called Jared and told him we'd love it if he would come on a trip with us. He said, I don't want to come. I can go to trips by myself. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to come on your trip, mom and dad. I can go on my own trips like a big boy. I asked him what he wants me to do now because I can't change his childhood. And he said he wants, me, he wants me to let him live alone, so I'll be doing that. He's my son, but he is an adult. I can't do anything to help him if he doesn't want to be helped. Why is, it, why is he the asshole? Why is the dad the asshole? I've got to know because the, the flare said asshole. Like, what is he supposed to do? Get a time machine? And, uh, don't, please don't tell me that this is going to be like the top post is going to be you've got to make the situation financially whole. Anytime you take your 14-year-old daughter, if you, if you buy your 14-year-old daughter back to school supplies, your 30-year-old son should get a dividend paid out from the family to the exact same amount of the value of the school supplies you purchased. You're the asshole. Why didn't you include him in the trip? You need to be more sensitive to your older son's feelings instead of calling him names and telling him to get over it. Sounds like you definitely favor your bio daughter over your adopted son and he knows it. He's, does, he's, doesn't he have other shit going on? I'm sorry. Like he's... He's 30 years old. If, if one kid was 14 and the other one was like 17, then I'd be like, yeah, that's a dick move. But like, I'm just putting myself in the mindset. Like if my parents had a kid after I went to college and they were like, hey, we're taking, we're taking Jada to Tuscany. Do you want to come? I would be like, well, I got to knock out the damn rent, you know? I mean, I would love to, I would love to, but... Jada has summer vacation. I got to actually like book the time off. I got Isaac videos to make. Exactly. I got to play Rumbleverse. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think he's the asshole. Hi, I'm 30. <clears throat> And my mom just took me on a trip this summer. We have a big family and couldn't afford trips when she was raising all of us. So now that she can afford it, she does. You're the asshole. I still, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe there's a, just a cultural or a personality difference here. I can't imagine resenting your parents because they took your younger sibling who is basically part of a, who's a child. You're an adult. Your sibling is a child. And you're like, oh, you're the asshole for not taking me on this trip. It doesn't make any sense to me. Also, yeah, he asked if he wanted to come on trips. And he said, no, I'm a big boy. I can buy my own trips. Soft, you're the asshole. Just get over it has man up vibes. Look, here's the thing. 99% of the time, you should not tell somebody to man up. But there's like a 1% situation where you got to like man up. It's just because it's almost always wrong doesn't mean it's wrong in all situations. Like you remember the Kitchen Nightmares episode? Where the lady ordered a hamburger but they ran out of buns so they served her the hamburger patty on sourdough bread. And then she started to cry because she was like, they don't have any, they don't have any buns. That's a man up situation. You're like an adult... Your burger's got uh, the wrong kind of bread. You gotta, I'm, I'm sorry, you've got to be able to weather the storm there. That, I'm giving you a soft, you're the asshole for toxic masculinity. That's fine. But he didn't say man up. He said get over it. And then they, so it's like, first off, it's he didn't even, you're the asshole for this thing that you didn't say, but is kind of similar to this thing that you said 
based on uh, the vibes, remind him that you chose him. Maybe arrange some stuff for you to do with him. And when he says no, you're still the asshole. Yes, your circumstances have changed. Yes, you can give your daughter the life you want to. It doesn't stop your son from feeling the way he feels. Okay. That's sure. But he's 30 years old. I'm not saying you have to be like an emotionless husk, but you could like be sympathetic to the fact that your parents, you know, your adopted parents raised you when they had lower means. And then now they have greater means and be like happy for the greater success of the family and the people who, who chose you and, and reared you instead of resenting the fact that like your sister is getting to go to like a, you know, a holiday in express. You're the asshole. You shouldn't have adopted a kid when you were in a bad financial position. You should have thought about stuff like this. Before you adopted a child, you should have been like, what if we're poor now, but we get rich later and we're able to provide for another child and this child resents us for it. You got to think about stuff like this before you adopt. You don't get to just adopt a kid and toss him out like a practice pancake. What the hell are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to steal practice pancake. That's great. User received gold for this post. Practice pancake. It's not a practice pancake situation. This is like the next 20 comments. This reminds me of when you throw out a practice pancake. That one of these days is going to hit. So much this. People feel like they're entitled to children no matter what. And don't think about if they're capable of raising them. He raised them. He just did, he couldn't take them on a trip when he was 14. I don't understand. <laughs> he, he, he's raised. Very much this. Did the process of adoption create this financial hardship or failed rounds of IVF? It's funny how much you try to buy your way into children, the less qualified to support those children you become. Is that funny? Do I need to bust out the dictionary? This has 143 upvotes. <laughs> Definitely. They said English wasn't their first language. Maybe they live in a place with less scrutiny over adoptions. Or fucking, maybe they don't. Dummy. <laughs> I don't do, who knows? As long as we're making shit up that could be true or could be false. What the hell are you talking about? Do you, you need to man up. I'm not adopted, but I'm the oldest sibling, and I'm taking the tossed out like a practice pancake into therapy with me next session. Please don't. Your therapist is going to lose respect for you. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> That's the, that, I was joking about that one. Normally, say, normally I say I'm not joking. That time I was joking. I just thought it would be funny therapist is going to be like, Jesus Christ, this is like the eighth time you brought up the practice pancake. Please. But we, the Spongebob typing, but we deserve to be parents. They wanted to call to themselves parents. Of course they didn't care about the life they could give to the child. They had to stay in a La Quinta in Suites instead of the Marriott. Jared was old enough to last them just a few years till they could have their miracle Jada. They would give her everything they could right after Jared was out. OP, don't forget, you're still a parent even after your kid is 18. If you were regretful about not being able to give him a better life as a child, you should include him now that you can do it. You're the asshole. It's a trip! Is this crazy? Am I crazy? Did they, did they toss him little bread crusts? Hey, Jared, come over for dinner. Here's some gruel. Oh, Jada, how, how do you like your beef Wellington cooked? It's a, it's a trip 16 years later. This kid was 14 in like, I can't do the math, 2006. This fucking, they didn't even have like a Motorola Razor back then. The world has changed. It's driving me crazy.
Okay. Did you invite your son on the trip or perhaps save up to send him on one of his own? You're the asshole regardless. Okay, well, then I choose not to answer the question. Crazy 187. You're, you're throwing me a suicide pass here. If you ask me a question and no matter what the answer is, you're going to indict me, then I, I choose to not answer. You're the asshole regardless for dismissing his frustration because he's 30. You caused the feelings of inadequacy. Just because you didn't have the money then doesn't mean you shouldn't make an attempt to treat him equally now. I completely understand where he's coming from. Seeing the younger sibling get spoiled after being raised by strict financially struggling parents sucks. It's not his fault you weren't ready to be parents. You do owe him an apology, though, and probably a lot of money for the therapy he needs. It's crazy, man. I, I, look, I'm not saying you shouldn't... You sh you're, a 14-year-old kid has different needs than a 30-year-old man. And different means to meet those needs. Like, I feel like if my parents... Like, I'm 33. If my parents had a 14-year-old daughter or son, for that matter, I would almost be like... And I guess this, this doesn't mean that this person is wrong. But I would be patronized. If they were like, we took your sister out to Red Lobster, so we sent you like a, a gift certificate to the keg. I'll be like, Mom, that's not necessary. Maybe I feel that way because I'm an only child. It's hard to put myself in those shoes. Maybe I feel that way because I was parented very well. That being said, I didn't go on any fancy trips. I lived in Kingston, Ontario. Every year we went to Belleville or Ottawa. She was a two-hour drive. We stayed in a Holiday Inn, and then we ate at chain restaurants that they didn't have in my hometown. Now, it's still, it was nice. So I, I had a good time. I, maybe I'm just not, as, as a child, I wasn't as into trips as they were, but still. I mean, I'd, maybe it was not so nice of me to have the opportunity to go to uh, sneaky pizza and eat pizza rolls in the Quinty Mall that was 45 minutes away from the Cataraqui Town Center, the mall that I normally go to. But still, it just seems, it, it really sounds like they're interpreting this from like the perspective that like they raised the first child and we're like, fuck you, fuck you. Here's some dirt for dinner. Eat shit. Uh, 18 years old. Boom. Get out of the house. Wah, wah, look at our precious angel. Well, well, oh, oh, you know how I'm going to fuck over my adopted son. I'm going to get like a great job and really elevate my station in life and then uh, use my newfound salary of financial liquidity to provide them the kind of life that I wish I could have provided my first child with. Like we're one dial on the satire meter away from them being like, like the, the top comments being like, you should also uh, under provide for your current daughter. If you really want things to be fair, you should start... Uh, putting them on like poverty wages again. You should start feeding them maybe like a little cabbage, cabbage and hot water for dinner every single night. It's like, think of the 30 year old man, okay? He's incapable of making himself emotionally whole in this situation. I'm not, I'm not trying to harp on, on the guy who, whatever, he can be like upset. Like the 30 year old man could be upset. I think it's a little juvenile, but I also haven't been through it myself. But I'm harping on the Redditors who are trying to get this dad to, like, fucking kill himself in Minecraft or something. They're going off on him saying he's a bad dad. It actually seems like he's, he's, he's doing pretty well, honestly. I mean, he wrote the post, so who knows, but still... I don't know. I don't think that not letting your son date at the same age that you're letting your daughter date now has anything to do with how much money you're making. That shit was fucking... That shit was fucking... It's 16 years ago. It was 16 years ago. People change. I'm not saying it's a different time. I'm saying it's, the dad is a different man. He's, he's become the, the second ship of Theseus. He might even be like the fifth ship of Theseus. You have a favorite child, a do-over child, if you'd rather call her that. I'm sure that he wouldn't. You're, you would rather call her that to make the OP look worse. Of course, that's permanently impacted how Jared sees you. 
The number of people arguing that it's not wrong to do better on the second kid is interesting. Hmm, the number of people calling me fools, uh, calling me a fool and an asshole for my asshole comment really makes me think. I didn't call Opie an asshole. I was very careful not to do that. I said how they've treated their two children is the way that an asshole would do that. The way that they're acting now, where they're explaining all the bad decisions they made with Jared as justified because it's over and can't be fixed, yeah, that makes them a huge asshole. Sure, you can't fix what's in the past, but there's not some magic number of times you have to apologize that lets you sweep what you did under the rug. Jared does not have to get over the fact that he had a shitty childhood because of OP. Because of OP, he was adopted at age 12. This shit's driving me crazy, man. I don't know what to say. I'm losing my mind. There's not even a single you're not the asshole or like everybody sucks here. You're the asshole. Wow, OP. Everything about this screams an attempt to conceal favorite child vibes. He's not happy for his sister because he was never treated like this. All this early curfew and overprotection sounds like you became a parent with no prior knowledge, which is very irresponsible. How could you become a parent? How could you become a parent with prior knowledge? That doesn't make any sense. It's a necessary condition. And now you've acted extremely dismissive of your son. Okay. He's doubling down to justify his, comment, his actions in his comments, too. He's an asshole bordering on worse. He came here to have his point backed up, but it backfired because he's a D-O-U-C-H-E. A doce. Holy cow. This is... I feel like I've... Everyone on... Twitch is agreeing with me right now, which is frightening because it means the YouTube comments are going to be scary as hell. You're the asshole, and it seems like you raised your daughter into a brat. What the? Did she, she didn't even play a role in the story. She literally just exists. Envrox. She didn't do anything at all. <laughs> Call the dad an asshole. But that's, if Jade is catching strays. She didn't even do anything. She just went on the trip with her parents. Holy cow. I'm losing it, man. That's a, you're right. That's a third party. You're the asshole. Whew. You're the asshole. At no point in your poster comments do you mention that you love, care, or anything. The way you talk, it's, we made a good deed adopting a teenager. He should be grateful. But it looks like when Jada came into the picture, she became the golden child. And you pass everything. He, you pass her everything he never had. I, but he... How, what can he do? What can he do? I don't know what you want. I don't understand. I'm sorry. And it's real. I'm not filtering this necessarily through the idea that this guy is 30, so he must be like a Fortune 500 CEO by now. It's just like I... He's 30, so I expect him to, like, not openly resent his 14-year-old sister. You can openly resent your parents. That seems fairly normal. But, like, <laughs> you know, you're a grown man being jealous of a, of a teenage girl. is like, just fucking weirdo energy. Just very strange. Can I get one not the asshole? Oh, let's go! He shouldn't take his resentment out on his sister. Based on this post in your comments, seems like you minimize his feelings pretty often. Everybody sucks here. Let's go! <laughs> One part, I, I could, I mean, I don't even think he sucks that bad based on what he said, but still. Holy cow. Sane Redditor, sane Redditor. Not the asshole because you didn't have money back then. You and your wife adopted him and gave him love and a stable home. You're the asshole. He scared, he scared the crap out of me. I got jump scared by the door opening. Uh, oh, my God. Go. Oh, okay, have fun. Love you. You're the asshole for dismissing his feelings. Of course Jada's on your side. She gets all the benefit of the trial run with your first. Jada's 14 years old. Can you just chill out? 
She's 14. You're so biased because you're a parent? Yeah, but I'm also a kid. You know, I'm not a child, but I'm somebody's child. I can, put, I can re relate to this, like, in abstract, not literally, though. I don't, I, I mean, this is just, this is something I can't relate to. I, I don't understand the, um, the middle child, youngest child, like, older child dynamic. Younger children, the youngest child is always the one that is treated as the baby. Or, oh, they tried really hard on the oldest child. By the younger child, they were tired of being parents, so they just sent me out in the yard with no supervision. And the middle child, I'm the middle child. Oh, the older one's being disciplined, and the younger one is being showered with attention. Nobody's paying attention to me. They had another kid. Now there's two middle children, and the one that used to be the baby is now also a middle child with me, but I'm also like their older sibling and I'm gonna, and then, then I don't, but, and I used to be the baby for a while, but I don't remember being the baby. So when I was getting that resentment from my older siblings were resenting me for getting the attention, I was getting the attention. I got the benefit, but I don't remember that. So I resent my parents for that too. Like I don't, it, it just, I don't know. It strikes me as kind of like Brady Bunch astrology, but I'm not a psychiatrist or an astrologer. So I'm not sure if I fully am qualified to, to give my diagnosis on that one. Or with sibling, that's true. I'm not with sibling. Anyway, regardless, let's say that's react court slash marker.